priset. Where we live, we're used to darkness through half the year. But we will never let that stop us from getting out in the nature. We continue doing what we love and push our limits, no matter the time of the year or the time of the day. M Tiger Sports, introducing Superion, the world's most powerful lamp for active outdoor use. Då är det dags för den första deltävlingen av nya stafettligan här i Klingatorpet precis utanför Knisslinge här i Göngebygden. Så det är dags för den första deltävlingen av stafettligan. Och stafettligan vet ni, det är lite olika tävlingar med olika antal sträckor. 10 mila ingår till exempel. Och den här första deltävlingen då som FK Göngarna arrangerar tre sträckor. Och det är VM-format, alltså kring 35 minuter per sträcka. Så det kommer bli mycket action, det är jag helt säker på. Och frågan är då så här, en dryg månad innan den stora, stora övningen 10 mila. Då är det ju natt också i år, även för damerna förresten. Men det här är ju något helt annat. Många av de stora starka lagen, IFK Göteborg till exempel, Stora Tuna på här sidan, har ju inte bara ett, de har två, kanske tre riktigt starka lag som kan vinna en sån här tävling med tre sträckor av 35 minuter. Vilket gör att det kommer bli väldigt, väldigt spännande. Och detsamma gäller ju på damsidan där vi också har många starka klubbar med många bra lag på start. Så det är en ingrediens som man kanske inte har när det kommer till 10 mila för då är det ett lag som gäller. Men här är det flera bra lag från de stora klubbarna vilket gör det extra spännande kan jag tycka. Och jag gillar också upplägget med tre sträckor av 35 minuter. Precis som man kör på VM nu så blir det väldigt, väldigt mycket action. Kanske inget lag som kommer dra ifrån jättemycket utan vi kommer ha spänning ända in på mållinjen. Det är jag helt säker på. Så jag ser väldigt mycket fram emot den här första deltävlingen av Stafettligan 2024. Och kanske då, om jag ska sticka ut taka lite grann, så tror jag att Stora Tuna kommer vinna här klassen. Eller inte bara tror, jag är rätt säker på det. Så att vi hoppas att det blir en riktigt, riktigt härlig tävling nu här i regi utav FK-köringen. 
Ja, vi står här med Pia Jangvik som är en, av, en i laget av favoriterna inför stafettligan imorgon. Hur har ni förberett er inför stafetten? Vi har tränat, tränat bra i hela vinter och haft mycket stafettträningar och massstart pass och ja, vi har ja, tränat bra mot stafetter generellt. Och det är över 100 lag på startlinjen. Hur känns det? Ja, det blir brutalt. Det blir, jag tror det blir mycket kaos, men det är kul. Um, och det är ganska korta banor, intensivt. Uh, vad tror du blir avgörande? Nej, det blir nog orienteringen som vanligt som avgör. Um, det tror jag. Uh, Håll i sin gaffel och finna bra traser tror jag blir en nyckel. Uh, du har ju sprungit jättebra i helgen. Vad tycker du om Göringeterrängen? Ja, det tycker jag är bra. Um, lite uh, lite mysten och uh, brutit och sånt, men uh, absolut fint. Uh, och hur ser uh, Oko Linnés lag ut uh, inför morgon? Uh, ja, jag ska ut på andra sträckan. Um, Ida övre på första och sen Johanna Ridfeldt på sista. Uh, och har ni någon speciell taktik? Uh, springa snabbt och bra. <laughs> Och sista frågan är, vilka ser ni som största konkurrent? Mm, det har jag inte tänkt så mycket på, men det är väl som vanlig de stora klubbarna, IFK, Göteborg och jo, men Stora Tuna. Och det är väldigt, väldigt många goda lag tror jag. I alla fall när det bara är tre sträckor. Mm. Ja, här är vi. Ja, som sagt, klockan är då snart... Eh... Mm. Uh, and as we heard, uh, or maybe didn't really understand, but it's the third day in a row for many of the runners here at the Swedish League uh, Easter weekend, but it's the first ever relay league competition in history in Sweden. So welcome to this relay here, uh, first time for Sweden where we have this league competition uh, throughout the whole season. Uh, on Friday, we had a long distance with the winner, Pia Young Week, that we saw just in the picture in a short interview, and Max Peter Bamer as the winner in uh, the men's class. And yesterday, then, a middle distance with the winners, Alexandra Hornik and Emil Svensk. And now, today, this three men or three women uh, relay three times a middle distance scored three times 35 minutes for the runners. It's uh, going to be a very fast competition because the terrain is really open with good visibility and a bit of stony as well, but uh, overall quite nice terrain. Uh, per Forsberg, in the interview before, uh, we had a little bit of struggles there with the translation. We should have an automatic uh, translation uh, there. For with subtitles but it didn't really work so i will shortly summarize he said that we have really many teams here it's only three legs and it's three quite short legs many big teams because we have uh, the runners here for other com competitions as well it's very hard to predict who's gonna win today so many first and maybe even second team second teams that have a chance for the victory um if we look at the start list, very many teams, 105 teams in the women's class that we will start with here. Um, and the favorites, maybe the, one of the biggest favorites. See the start list here. Uh, Ukulini and Iktisa, IFK Göteborg, Sturatuna, Västerviks and IKHP. Uh, they have really strong teams. Uh, we see that they are lined up here. Uh, in a starting order but so of course we don't have any seeding yet because uh, it's the first ever competition so the start numbers they are according to earlier swedish championships competitions and then also a few wild cards uh, in order to get the runners to the first line here at the start uh, maybe a few words Sprint relay and then the 
Swedish Championships in the relay as well. And it's a combined cup, so it's not only a cup for the men and for the women. It's also, um, there's also this ranking then for the best club overall, where at least, uh, where we have the nine best results of the 13. So if you take the women's and the men's classes together, and at least three results from the men or women then and uh, special as well at the very last competition at the swedish championships both the junior and the senior teams will count into this overall standing so it's not only about the women's cup or the men's cup it's also a club competition here overall scene And we mentioned it before, there are many teams here, and not only first teams. If we, for example, pick out uh, IFK Göteborg's third team, they had really strong results, especially in the long distance. So, of course, with good visibility in the forest, short legs, it really opens up for a tight competition for all of the teams here. Uh, and not only five or six clubs that can fight for the victory today. You can see the runners warming up here in the warm-up area. Uh, they have been competing here two times before. The terrain actually is a little bit overlapping, so we have uh, middle distance uh, competition that uh, was partly in the area that we are going into today. Uh, I heard a few words from the course planner before. He actually said it's going to be the nicest uh, part of the forest for today's race. Uh, and if we think about the fact that the runners have been very, very fast uh, already at the earlier days, it's going to be really, really quick today. Here we have the teams. Uh, Yekua all the way to the right with start number one, then uh, Anke Kjernstad, Södertälje Nykvarn with Clara Bori, and one of the favorites maybe for today, Lena eliasson Love with Westerviks, then uh, Eleonora Alinder for Göteborg Majorna OK first team. It's actually the second team. They will have the first team coming later on into the picture. This is Tisaran, Lilian Forsgren. And then, of course, another favorite team. Uh, IFK Göteborg with Victoria Hesta Björnstad. Uh, the winners of Mosen Stavetten, IK Håpe. And... Uh, few more teams there in the first line as they are lined up here for this very first competition of the relay league and there they go 5.9 kilometers are waiting for this 105 teams and it's gonna be forked all the way from the start uh, it's going to be forked for all three legs so no straight leg uh, only as the course setter the course planner mentioned before um, only the last leg in the very end will be straight uh, but of course all the runners they are very aware of that fact uh, get an overview here over the forest, uh, a little glimpse there of the vegetation as well. Runners have been talking about the fact that it was very stony the last days. Should be a little bit less stony today. Uh, and even though if you then later see a glimpse of the map, even though it looks very fast in runability, uh, don't forget that it is stony. You can see a few rocks then as well. Uh, 
And of course, we have uh, cameras also in the forest. I think that the first TV control will be at around 10 minutes after the start. So a few minutes to go first. We can follow them with GPS and also with this overhead shots. I can also see that uh, it has been raining a lot there. You can see the track here. It's quite, it, even from this perspective, it looks quite marshy. It is wet out in the forest. And you can see that they're all lined up here. Quite a long tail already. There are basically two root choices to this first control, which is forked. Um, you can go straight. We have a few teams going straight. And then uh, there is the possibility to go all the way to the right um, on a path. You can see this the runners coming from this path here, running over the bridge. Uh, and first control then forked, of course. Uh, a bit green just around the first control. It's actually one of the only a bit greener controls in the whole course. So you have to be very care careful here right after the start. And one of the three options is actually located on this open area that we just got in the picture. You can see it here. You've got Göteborg uh, together with Mayuna going straight to their option, the middle option. And you can see a few teams there that went to the left. You've got Göteborg third team. So the Tallinnik Varnsunds and Skogs Mordana. And also uh, Hakarv's Poikana. It was a good option to go to the left if you have this control to the southwest. You can see there, so the Telia and uh, Hakarv's Poikana quick in to this control. You can also see that the Westervik and Iktisa that had the control to the very north, heading out north again, heading back to this path in order to get a little bit of help both both physically and technically to the next control. And of course in this area here visibility is very good. So if you are a little bit behind you can still see the runners in front of you. If you have maybe had a little bit of a longer option at the first control, that's a very good possibility to get back, to fight yourself back in the group. Um, which gives, of course, the runner after you a good uh, position then for their leg when they might have a little bit of a shorter option to this first control. You can also see that this first bit here, you can see it from this picture, it's very, very flat. Almost no climbing here in the beginning. So you have to be careful with direction. But also here, of course, the runners just around you, they help you with that. And back with the GPS, we can see that still Södertälje. 
going good when it comes to direction. I wonder a little bit, a few of the teams, they have to go a bit more to the north in order to get to this working at the stone on the hill. And uh, as you can see, the contours here, not very high. You can see Giamuko heading north. They have the situation under control, the same, of course, for IFK Göteborg. Now you can see that uh, two, two groups building there. Mm. I can also see that the teams which went to the north might lose a few seconds here. Mm, not sure if Sudatelia is hesitating a little bit when they enter the circle. Should get help from this small stone wall just behind the control. No problems there for Mayona. IFK Göteborg. Fall shopping, Pan Krihansta. Behind, about 15 seconds behind. We have Halden, Sturatuna first team. Malungs and Urion. You can see how Westervik and Iktisa, they followed this path for quite a long time. Having the control to the south. And now uh, meeting the other runners heading out from the control so they get an indication about the time they lost on this first route choice. So now they are heading towards the third control and then at the fourth control we're gonna have a TV, the first TV control. So very soon we should get them into the picture to the first TV control. We're expecting Mayana, Kore, IFK to be among the four teams. Uh, so they punched there now, but we didn't get the pictures in, so you can see the results there in the lead, Eleonora Linde for Göteborg Majorna. Uh, Vilma von Krusen sker ändå för Kåre, second position, Umeå. Then we had another team for IFK Göteborg. And you can see there are many teams, uh, 20 teams within 32 seconds, so still very tight, no bigger mistakes so far of the top teams. Uh, you can see though at that Westervik, Lena Eliasson Löv, one of the teams that went around there to the second control, uh, 52 seconds behind, so a small gap there, about half a minute time loss I would guess. Uh, 
ska hålla till innan en lång sträcka över till nästa tv-kontroll då som är efter 3,4 km. So here we are back with the GPS and we can see that IFK Göteborg, the first team, Victoria Hesta Björnstad, actually able to win gap of a few seconds just out of control five. Uh, but I can feel that the other teams are in contention again. The teams behind, we have uh, uh, IK Hakarvs Pojkarna, Södertälje. Uh, one team that made quite a big mistake that was in the lead before. Jettebar Mayana first team. I guess they ended up at the wrong forking there. Uh, Halden doing a mistake at control five. So we can see that uh, Eleonora Alinder, who was in the lead at the first split and now is around 30 seconds behind and we get this long route here to the next control it's a common control but it's a long leg so you have to different options here you can go a little bit more to the right using the path or then you can go quite straight all the way basically or use the path a bit more to the left I can see that uh, almost all of the runners, they follow the leader, they follow IFK Göteborg on this first bit of this long leg to control seven, I think it is. And this uh, first area here is actually an area they haven't been in at the earlier days. Uh, they are heading now into an area at control seven. So just after this long leg where they had a few controls in the very end of the middle distance. Mm, and so far still all on the same route as uh, IFK Göteborg. But of course, I mean the runnability is quite good in the forest, the visibility is good, so there is no need to split up here. If you don't feel that you have a better option, of course. Now we can see that Hakarvs uh, Poikena heading a bit to the north. Uh, and many of the teams behind following Falköping, Södertälje, Pankrychanstad, Majorna, Sundsvall. We basically have Jefko Göteborg and Kåre. Uh, so Victoria Hesta Björnstad and Vilma von Krusenstjärna going a bit more straight following this small stone wall. Going, uh, choosing to go more straight here. It'll be interesting to see if Hakkabs Boykina is going all the way around or if they cut a little bit through the terrain there. And you can't see it in the picture here, but I can tell you that uh, you also have Kore about 25 seconds behind IFK Göteborg on the same route choice. We have Iktisa on this option as well. They are around 50 seconds behind IFK Göteborg. So Vilma von Krusenstjärna and Hanna Wisniewska the runners for Kore and Iktisa, and then we have Göteborg Majorna UK second team on this 
straight option as well. So, as much as I can see, we have four teams there, but of course, not all of the teams ha carry a GPS device. Mm, here we can see her in the picture. You can see that she is alone. Victoria Hester Björnstad. Can't see any other runner down to the left. I think that Kore is just outside the picture here. If we zoom out a little bit. Heading into the forest again. Uh, Victoria Hester Björnstad for IFK Göteborg. There we have her, uh, Vilma von Krusenstjärna. And of course for Göteborg, it wasn't really a choice to go all alone on this route because she was in the lead when she decided her route. Uh, the teams behind, they did an active decision there. So here you can see the runners that went a bit more to the north, heading into the forest. Of course, the first teams have been there for a while. They have to fight through a little bit of a greener area and the marsh. And we know from uh, what the course planner said earlier that it's very, very wet in the marshes. So here we are back with the GPS and we can see that uh, the group to the north, they have to take a few more meters to climb. Uh, IFK Göteborg and Kore, they are on the way towards the control on this plateau already. But a bit more distance left. I think that they will more or less get together again at the control. Uh, the control itself shouldn't be a big problem for the runners. We are hating, waiting here at this control. And you can see here that uh, also in the forest visibility is good. Even though it's uh, spring and even though we have summertime now, uh, the leaves are not out yet. Uh, and of course that allows you to see quite far this kind of terrain. Turning to the left, that should be the route choice of Göteborg. And indeed, here she is, Victoria Hesta Björnstad, the first one. 
Getting closer to the control, we can also see Vilma von Krusenstjerna for Kore. And uh, we're waiting for the other t group coming there. Down the hill, that should be Fallshopping. Mayona. Uh, Ikuhope. But let's see here. Yes, it is. There is the team for, I think it is IFK Göteborg as well. Indeed, so the third team into position three. We have Emma Biesmo for leading her, not having a GPS device. Ayok Sanen, Kanga Sala, Elsa Sunesson, Fallshopping, Hida Holmqvist Johansson, Ikope, Eleonora Alinder, Göteborg Majorna, Emma Ling, Ikope. And uh, the two teams from Västervik. Koline Friberg Klusner and Lena Eliasson Love on position 10 and 11, about 30 seconds behind the leaders. There's something like a small gap between position 13 and 14, but otherwise I still think that every runner here can see another runner in front of her. Tisa, interesting, 113 behind. Uh, they will have yesterday's winner, Alexandra Hornik, on the last leg then. Ashrine Kutkaita will run the second leg. Still, uh, we haven't seen a big gap here between the runners. Might be the first here, not really. So now we had uh, around two and a half minutes, and still it's one big tail here of runners. And after this control, we have a few shorter controls again. They all are forked, so the next one, the two next controls, they are forked. Uh, we had a few struggles there uh, by, for example, Westervik. Not sure if uh, Ikuhope went straight to their option. Didn't lose a lot of time though. So here the standings at this control seven after the long leg where we had IFK uh, Göteborg and Kore going a route on their own, a bit more to the south. Uh, no bigger difference there in the route choice. So here you can see the GPS again, the two controls just after this common control forked again uh, before we have this stone in the green area which is a common control and from there you can already see it here that there are only two forkings per control after this one. Uh, of course that's where the last leg won't have any forkings anymore. And as I said before, Vestavik did a mistake getting to the wrong forking, staying too high in towards the hill in the slope. Should have gone to the control to the very right, but ended up at the middle one. Så kan jag då kika på GPSen här och 
ser att Vilma från Kusekarna Korea är långt fram. Men det är ganska en lite mindre grupp. Man kan se där det är still. IFK Göteborg and Kore. Which are in the lead. They're now going a bit more north, not staying on the red line. Trying to get a little bit closer to the con control on this cut area. It's quite easy. So no problem for the top teams. And here you can see that we only have two four kings, as I mentioned before. Uh, due to the fact that we won't have a four king this part on the last leg. You can also see that Pan uh, Kristianstad and Ikohope, they choose to go to the west of this hill. Pan uh, actually all the way on this small path. And you can see that it was a smart decision to go all the way to the west by Jakobs Poikena. Now uh, made it the way to the top of the group, Hilda Holmqvist. Uh, Hilda Holmqvist Johansson. Mm, they have been out for around 31 minutes now. Uh, expected running time was 35 minutes. Maybe be a little bit longer. Mm, 
Hon är strax bakom den här tätgruppen. Men det är några gasslingkontroller nu som kommer att göra att de kommer inte vara väl samlade tror jag. Utan det kommer vara lite, lite utbryt tror jag in mot växlingen här ändå. Here we can see the, the runners from the second leg starting to warm up at the arena. So far, seems as if uh, IFK Göteborg, Kore, IKHP and Gemuko had the same forking. And Pankri Hans at uh, Fallköping and Linnea had the other one. See that uh, IFK Göteborg and Kore maybe went a bit far to the east here. Uh, but of course that was only a problem of a few seconds. Pound mm, Krihanstad with a few problems there. Uh, had to go back from one forking to the other one. Hanna Müller running for Pankri Hansta. I can see again, not the best direction out from the control by Kore, IFK Göteborg and Fallköping. Uh, better job by IKHP and GMOK. Now uh, we can see them jumping over this stream. Quite many teams, uh, a few of them not having a GPS device on them. Now it's only three controls left until the changeover. Uh, and no forking for any of the runners or any of the teams as uh, the second leg runners are waiting here for the changeover. I can see IFK Göteborg, Södertälje, Kristianstad here. Back with the GPS and we can see that there is still a group of four uh, teams, at least uh, four teams with GPS devices in the lead. Göteborg Majerna, IKHP, Kore and IFK Göteborg. Mm, 
Det är strax vara där nu, täten. Nu stämplar de första lagen vid förvarningen och då är det Erik Åkesson i det här Umeå markbygden kombinationslaget. So now we have them at the second last control at the pre-warning, so I can tell you which teams uh, without any GPS devices are up there. And it's actually the one in the lead, Erika Åkesson, but this is kind of a combination team uh, between two clubs. So it's IFK Umeå and Mark Bygdens uh, OK. Uh, and then on second position, Eleonora Alinder, Emma Biesmo on third position, and also uh, Emma Biesmo not bearing a GPS device today. So this should be the last control, so we are waiting for the teams. They should be here in a few seconds only. And uh, as I said, we are expecting Erika Åkesson, Eleonora Alinder and Emma Biesmo the first runners of course there were other teams there as well within a few seconds Vilma von Krusenstjärna, Victoria Hesta Björnstad, Nicoline Friberg Klusner, for Kåre, IFK Göteborg and Västervik and now we are waiting for the teams and I think it's Emma Biesmo for leading her no it's Vilma von Krusenstjärna for Kåre in the lead uh, just followed by Emma Biesmo uh, Eleonora Linde was there, Västervik, another team for IFK Göteborg, IK Håpe, another team for IFK Göteborg here. So now they're changing and it's gonna be Kåre uh, who is changing maybe first, ah, not really having the right line there. So the first change over after 38 minutes and 39 seconds, uh, about uh, almost four minutes lower than expected. Uh, sending out the second leg runners and still a very big group here all together. Uh, splitting up on the course at one control, the very long leg to control seven, but we could notice that it didn't really matter if you went to the south or to the north, otherwise no bigger mistakes for the teams here. And maybe the first gap after 12 runners. And now let's see how big the gap is to team 13. Uh, 34 seconds uh, is the gap from the first to the last runner in this first group and then another 30 seconds to Iktisa, one of the favorites for today, Hanna Wisniewska, but um, thinking about the fact that actually two of the favorite teams, uh, also Westerviks with Lena Eliasson Löp, but thinking about the fact that we have so many teams within uh, the top 10 or even top 12, I can see that it's quite will be quite a tough job to get back into the very lead for uh, Iktisa and Westervik. We get Hanna Mulle for Pan Krihansta struggling at one of the last four kings. Rebecca Heindrup for Stuna, Stura Tuna. About one and a half minutes af uh, after. And it's going to be interesting to see now when we have uh, around 12 teams uh, in the very lead. If it's going to be easier for a few of the teams to break away, because of course, if you have, uh, it makes a difference if you have 50 teams that help you uh, show you the direction, or if they're only. 10 12 if you have uh, missed by a few seconds it's very hard to get back again if you don't have the help from all these teams around and as less teams there are the bigger the 
possibility or the risk, depending on how you see on it, uh, that you lose the group. So the team's coming here around three minutes behind. Uh, quite exactly the top 30 within three minutes. So, for these top teams, we have uh, Tira Larsson for IFK Umeå, Mark Bygdens OK. Uh, out in the competition, Elsa Kaipe for Kåre, Veronika Kalinina for IFK Lidingö, Eva Örnhagen Jörgensen for Göteborg Majorna, Anna Öberg, Västerviks OK, second team, Tilda Palm, IK HP, Anna Kjellvik Löfven for IFK Göteborg and Clara Axelsson for the third team of IFK Göteborg. I can tell you that they, the first teams are approaching the first control. Uh, we had Göteborg Majorna, Kore and IFK Göteborg that went straight. Uh, we know that from the first leg that it paid off to do so. It's a good decision ja, there. Of course, they have the control to the very south. First stafet league tävling and first stretch and or will man for Chris and Shana and nöjd sådan. Ja, men det var bra avslut. Ja, det var väldigt tight ut i skogen förstod vi. Ja, jätte tight. Det var ju folk runt den hela vägen, men det blir så stafet ska vara. Så riktigt kul. Du hade en taktik att springa mycket runt, men du reviderade den lite förstod jag under loppet. Ja, till etta gick det bra att springa runt och sen när de sträcker mitt is tänkte jag så här, jag ska gå runt, jag ska gå runt. Var min plan inför och sen var jag där mitt under sträcket, mitt i skogen och bröta på, men ja, det gick med dem då. På långsträckan, så det var ju väldigt tight stafet, sa du, med mycket mm. löpa. Men du och eh, Göteborg blev ju ensamma i skogen. Ja, men precis. Victoria, hon körde på på det vägval jag också hade tänkt. Så jag och hon körde på och sen tittade jag vakt där och så var det inte någon annan med oss. Då tänkte jag, vad håller vi på med? Men vi var först vid kontrollen så det var ju skönt det. Ja, du gav ju Kåre en bra start nu. Vi skickade ja. ut på andra sträckan. Eh, vi är ute med Elsa Kajpe nu. Ja, ni har... Riktigt kul. Ni har mål att ligga med där framme hela tiden, förstår jag. Ja, absolut. Så när vi är ett ungt lag. Men ja. vi är här för att lära för framtiden också. Det är riktigt kul. Det låter bra det. Men då får ja. vi gratulera dig för ett bra lopp på första sträckan. Så får du gå och ta igen dig och höja på dina lagkompisar. Det ska jag absolut ja. Tack så mycket. Tack så mycket. Mm, interesting to hear that she actually changed her mind throughout the course. That she had a plan to go uh, around very often. But then, uh, yeah kind of get away from this plan at control seven uh, and also was a bit shocked when she noticed that no one else was following her and uh, we, Victoria has that Björnstad on the last leg when they went all straight You can see that uh, on the GPS that actually the gaps are getting bigger now. Uh, we have uh, Göteborg Majorna, IFK Göteborg and Kåre in the lead. And then there's a gap by about 30 seconds. Uh, back to Falköping and Pankri Hansen, of course. They, there are a few teams, uh, for example, IFK Umeå Mark Bygdens and uh, IFK leading uh, that have the, a GPS device on them. But uh, from the team that I can see, it's splitting up a little bit. You can see it here. Uh, Majorna, IFK and Kore, they went straight to, straight to the first control. And then, of course, if you have the control to the very south, there is uh, no risk or no possibility that you go all the way to the north as Ikohope and Linnea, that's mostly for the runners uh, having the control to the very north. You can 
see that the Vestavik chose to take something in between. I'm not sure if that's the best option. And uh, as on the first leg, we actually should have a camera at control four. Didn't work on the first leg. Let's see if it works here on the second one. Also see that it's great speed there by Majona, by Eva Örnhagen Jörgensen. And a gap of about 10-15 seconds. Now heading a little bit to the south to the control. Can't really see it on the screen here, but I can tell you that Kore uh, is just around the FK Göteborg there as well. And now we got the punch from this fourth control, so still no pictures, but we had uh, Eva Örnhagen Jörgensen there for Göteborg Majorna, six seconds ahead of Johanna Kjellvik Löfven for IFK Göteborg and eight seconds ahead of Elsa Kaipe Ukokora. Uh, no other team there yet. Now we got the punch from uh, Veronika Kalinina, Jefko Lidinga, uh, not having a GPS device, 43 seconds behind. So now there is a gap for sure between uh, Elsa Kaipe and Veronika Kalinina. 35 seconds and then another nine seconds down to Alva Suneson running for foul shoppings. Oikoa. And just behind uh, foul shopping, we also have Pan Kristianstad, IFK Göteborg, third team, uh, Hanna Öberg uh, for Västerviks, second team, and IKHP, uh, first and second team actually almost together uh, Susan Lush now punched for Linné as well all these runners within one and a half minutes so we have this first group of three runners and then we have another one of uh, about 10 runners because now we got the punch from Netta Rajamäki for Kangasala and Rusty Karhut Uh, Iktisa, interesting, was around one and a half minutes behind at the changeover, now it's 1.45. So Asrine Kutkaite lost around uh, 15 seconds. Mr. Week's first team, Elin Karlsson, punch there as well. Two and a half minutes behind. We also have the punch from the leaders at the changeover. Uh, you've got Umeå and Mark Bygdens uh, punch there, 234 behind. And now they're heading towards this long leg, control seven. Uh, we know that there's no big difference in the route choices. It was a little bit faster to go straight. Uh, 
Uh, one of the teams that missed the forking just before the long lag that I can see on the GPS here, foul shopping. Went to the wrong control. So Alva soon is on, uh, almost in the lead at control four, then a mistake to control five. Uh, must have lost about a minute there. And uh, beside uh, the top teams, we actually have uh, Pound Kristianstad that started really well here uh, on the second egg. Alva Björk was running out one and a half minutes behind. Now it's only 55 seconds, so almost half a minute or a bit more than half a minute faster on this first four controls. Interesting now when we look at the GPS, they are actually splitting up in the leading group. Uh, not very much, but um, Mayana with a bit more straight option. What seems to be a micro route choice. Uh, the other teams behind decided to just run out the path for a bit longer. We will get to see that later. The runners, they should come from uh, the lower left corner into the picture and then run over this cutting area. Not really yet there yet, but yeah, should be there in a few seconds. We are waiting for Mayona. Yeah, that's another runner. There she is, I guess. I think she's the one in the front on the top of the picture. And then we have other teams just behind. I think the one we have in the upper right corner, that's uh, Yemuko and then the two runners heading towards the path there right now are Jefko Göteborg and uh, Kore, maybe Pan Kristianstad as well. Compared to the runners on the leg before, they stayed on the path for a longer time, so not going as straight as uh, Victoria Hester Björnstad and Vilma von Krusenstjerna before. So they are a bit more to the north here. You can see that they are splitting up, going in different directions here over this uh, cutting area. Thank you. 
Getting back together here again. There were quite many teams, more than we can see on the GPS at least. So we can see that uh, if we think back to the first leg, we can say that the leading teams, they didn't go to the north of this small uh, marsh there. But then, uh, of course, staying to the south of the green area as well, so the difference is not very big. You can see that Hakov's uh, Poikana going to the north. Tilda Palm running for Iko Hope. You can also see that Orion going a different route, the very south. Louise Lundgren. But it is still this gap of about 10 seconds between uh, Jettebar Mayona and the other teams that we have seen now for yeah, for quite a while actually very strong by Eva Örnhagen Jörgensen uh, being able to keep this small gap even though the visibility is very good A little bit different approaches here again. Um, Gimuko cutting a little bit in this green area that might have been a bit unnecessary. Then going to the north, trying to catch that small path. Um, Pan Krihanstad going more straight in this part here. And here we are waiting at control 7 for the runners. Now all of them should come from the direction we have seen. Uh, Victoria Hesta Björnstad coming from at the first leg. Mm. This is Pan Kristianstad. Uh, Alva Björk, uh, really, really strong race so far. Uh, where are the others? Here is Etebar uh, Mayona. Getting a bit of help by the direction of uh, Alva Björk. Punching there in the lead. And as I mentioned before, uh, she was more than one and a half minutes behind at the changeover. So a great performance here so far by... Alva Björk. And we have Elsa Kaipe here for Kore. Uh, we had the team for IFK Göteborg, Johanna Kjellvik Löfven and uh, Veronika Kalinina for IFK Lidingö. So five teams now within half a minute. Waiting for Stora Tuna. Here she is. Tilda Östberg. Uh, Fall shopping. 
IFK Göteborg. And I think that's Iktis as well. Yeah, good middle section here by Osirina Kutkaita. She was 145 behind at control four. Now it's 119. Here we have Linné. Susan Lush. The gap there, 1 and 50. So there is a gap between her and Ausrine Kutkaite. But you can still see the runner in front of her. Just disappearing there. Mm, here we get Orion towards the co control, Louise Lundgren. Uh, she took a different route choice, as we could see on the GPS earlier. Uh, went from 15th to 11th. So here the standings at uh, second TV control Alva Björk as we could see with a great run so far on this second leg for Pan Kristianstad, Eva Örnhagen Jörgensen was in the lead uh, around 10 seconds ahead of the group for a long time just passed by Alva Björk a few meters before this second TV control and then on third IFK Göteborg, Johanna Kjellvik Löfven. And uh, the gap here, the first group uh, from position one to five, I would say, and then the second group from six uh, downwards, approx approximately one and a half minutes there to, yeah, let's say, Astrina Kutkaite Tisa in ninth position. So this is the replay of what happened to the next control. All of the top teams having the control to the very north. Take a look at Iktisa. Uh, not 100% wonder, sure with direction there. Losing about, let's say, 20 seconds. Small mistake there with direction by Orion approaching the control after the TV control. Uh, no problems for the top teams and you can see that they were uh, going all the way around 
this green bit there again to avoid uh, running in the green section for too long see that the gap uh, of the first group compared to the second group might be a bit bigger now it was quite exactly uh, 111 that the TV control seems to be a bit more at least if you compare to Mayuna and Pant Kristianstad Uh, this control here, we know that on the first leg it was a good option to go to the northwest. Uh, all of the top teams going to southeast. Oh. I think most important to not climb too much up the hill. It seems, it seems as if uh, Pan Krihanstad is on the way to get away from the others a little bit more now. Uh, Alva Björk seems to be very strong physically today. Seems as if all of the teams here, the top three teams heading towards the stone. You can see that uh, Stura Tuna and Fall Shopping going to the northwest, as mentioned before. Now a little bit of hesitation by Pan Krihanstad. Uh, chance for Eva Önhagen Jörgensen for Gemuko to get back into the lead or get in contact at least. Now they got the control. Let's see if the teams behind were able to get a bit closer again. So it's now the last of the forked controls left for the runners of the second leg. And then only straight controls to the finish. About, uh, say, six, seven minutes left from here until the changeover. And here we have the last leg runners for GMUK till the backlund, uh, who's going to run this anchor leg, the last leg. If we look at Pan Kristianstad, we're going to have Olivia Nilsson, 
And IFK Göteborg is going to send out uh, Ingrid Lundanes on the last leg. Those the three teams in the lead at the moment. Uh, maybe joined by Kore as well. And maybe joined by EFK leading her, but we had a bit of struggles with the GPS devices there. I think Kore is up there still. Not sure about leading her. You can see that also those teams got a bit too far to the south, uh, trying to approach this control. They're punching right now. We've seen that on the first leg as well. They have to be careful with direction, even if the controls are short ones. And you can see now very clearly that Pan Krihan's that and uh, Alba Björk really trying to push away from the other runners, trying to get out everything of her great physical shape today. You can see there, same kind of mistake by Falschöping, also heading down too far to the south. Might be that there is a control from another relay located at this uh, stone there. This is uh, Olivia Nilsson warming up for Pan Krihanstad. And the big question is are we going to have four teams or are we going to have five teams in the lead when they get to the pre warning at the second last control? They're right now at the third last control, should be there very soon. So here we're waiting at the last control. Now we got the first punches at the pre warning, uh, and we actually have leading her in the lead. Veronika Kalinina punching two seconds ahead of Alva Björk for Pan Krihanstad. And then we have Elsa Kaipi in third, uh, Eva Örnhagen Jörgensen for Jemuko in fourth, and IFK Göteborg in fifth, all of the teams within 12 seconds. So from 12 teams after the first leg we are now down on five teams after the second legs uh, coming here very soon to the last control all together more or less and 
They should be here very, very soon. Here we have one runner. It seems to be Kristianstad, followed by Lidingö. So Alva Björk uh, here in the lead after a very strong performance on this second leg, followed by Veronika Kalinina by of IFK Lidingö. And uh, they're heading over, handing over to Olivia Nilsson for Pan Kristianstad. And uh, Sara Livong for Lidingö. Coming here. Now it is actually Lidingö. Uh, still side by side together with Kristianstad, but it seems to be leading uh, uh, sending out their runner in the lead to the last leg. And let's see how big the gap is here between the two of them and the runners behind. Uh, interesting since we have a uh, route choice to the first control if the runners behind, how much they can see of the decisions of the runners in front. This is Kore, Elsa Kaipe into third. Then Johanna Schelvik, Löfven, IFK Göteborg into fourth. And Eva Örnhagen, Jörgensen for Göteborg Majorna into fifth. Uh, all five of them within 20 seconds. Uh, we also had the punches of the teams behind at the pre-warning, so they should appear soon as well at the last control. It's going to be Falköping, Stora Tuna, IFK Göteborg, the third team, and UK Linné. Uh, all there. Uh, Linné a little bit behind the other teams. Uh, about 40 seconds, so very soon we should see them coming here. Waiting for Alva Sonesson. Here she is. Side by side or just in front of Tilda Östberg, Stora Tuna. And the gap down to position six and seven is quite exactly one and a half minutes. And where is uh, Clara Axelsson? Here she is. Losing a bit of time here on the very last meters. She will send out Elin Monson. The last leg, so a strong runner there. Also for the third team for IFK Göteborg. So now we got Linné on the last meters, Susan Lush. She was all alone at the second TV control, no runner in front, no runner behind her, at least not in sight. Uh, and still no runner she can spot in front of her here, 239 behind the leader, uh, IFK leading her. Sending out the big star from the last two days, Pia Jung Vik. So let's see if she can do well today as well. Uh, but two minutes and 39, that's quite the gap. We have seen uh, Alva Björk uh, managing to get to the lead. Uh, she was one and a half minutes behind, but 240. I'm not sure if that's good enough, but let's see. She was very strong the last days and talking about uh, sending out a strong runner here's Ausrine Kutkaite and she is going to send out uh, yesterday's winner Alexandra Hornik and of course her job will be even harder 326 behind Mm. 
And as we have uh, more teams to come here, uh, meet IKHP and Kangasala. I can tell you from the start of the last leg, all of the teams uh, have chosen to go all the way around to the north on the path. Och så har vi Eksjö på väg in här också. So none of the teams has gone straight so far. Which would be a good option if you have one of the two controls a bit more to the south. Ja, jag har en nöjd pantjej här. Alva Björk, vad säger du om loppet? Eh, jo, men jag är nöjd med tekniken. Jag väntar väl fortfarande lite på den fysiska formen, men idag så har tekniken bättre i alla fall. Vad vi har sett på GPS och tv-kamerorna så har du legat i täten nästan hela tiden. Eh, ja, jag har inte haft så jättebra koll själv, men jag har inte sett så jättemycket rygga framför mig. Vad tycker du om? Jag har ju mycket gafflingar och banor. Du har haft full koll på dit, men jag har inte hamnat ensam någon gång under loppet. Jo, jag var lite ensam där ett tag. Men jag var inställd på att jag skulle ha fullt fokus på mig själv idag och inte kolla för mycket på de andra. Nu har kroppen känts nu då. Du har ju sprungit två tuffa inväljade lopp här innan och gjort det bra, framförallt igår. Ja, jag är mm. ganska missnöjd med helgen faktiskt, men jag hoppas väl att det bara blir bättre nu. Det är tidigt på säsongen. Ja, precis. Panke chans i täten efter två sträckor kan man väl säga. Det var ju jämt med Lidingö. Vem springer sista sträckan nu? Olivia Nilsson. Och vad säger vi om henne? Hon är riktigt duktig så jag tror på henne. Det kanske kommer en seger direkt i Stafettligan av inledningen här på säsongen. Det vore väldigt kul. Det låter bra det. Vi tackar dig Alva Björk för ett jättefint lopp och Parker Schanz som sagt ska vi följa resten av tävlingen. Tack så mycket. Tack själv. Mm, interesting, especially to hear that she's not satisfied with her physical shape. Uh, so far, it didn't look like that when we looked at the pictures here on the screen, at least. Uh, she also mentioned that she didn't see so many backs. Um, not so many runners around you, of course. That happens when you're in the lead. And, uh, well, she's very confident to her runner on the last leg, of course. But what else should she be? Uh, but it's going to be interesting now to see how they perform here. Uh, Hope we'll get some GPS soon. Here we can see the replay. Uh, as I mentioned before, all of the runners uh, chosen to go to the north. Many of the teams here, of those teams in the lead, had this control to the very north. Uh, you can see Pankrihan Sakiyamuko. But then they splitting up. Uh, I guess it's the teams they had to control to the very north, choosing to take this path, and Pankrihanstag going straight. And now we are live again. Uh, and we know that the straight option was very good on the first two legs. Um, Looks quite good here as well, even though I think that the other teams will get to see Pan Krihanstad again when she approaches the control. You can also see that uh, Stora Tuna and IFK Göteborg 3, they also decided to go to the north, uh, to this path. Elin Monson and uh, Marie Olausen running for IFK Göteborg 3rd team and Stora Tuna. Seems as if the first teams uh, punched at the control. Small advantage for 
the two teams are from Gothenburg. Then just behind Kore and Krihansta. I can tell you that uh, Linnea, first team, Pia Jungvik, uh, just a little bit to the south east to EFK Göteborg's third team. So going to the north of the marsh and pump, but uh, still straight. And the first splits we're going to get at control four. So at the next control, uh, if we look at the leading teams, so just in a few seconds, I guess. So now we have them at the radio control uh, and we have Gemuko there uh, in first position till the backlund, seven seconds ahead of IFK Göteborg. First team, Ingrid Lundanes, then 14 seconds behind Olivia Nilsson for UK Pan Kristianstad and 16 seconds behind Kore with Wendela Söderqvist. So we are still waiting for Lidingö. <laughs> Only four teams now. And we got a picture here from the forest. But still only four teams, as you can see in the graphics now. Still waiting for Sara Livong for leading a belt. Very soon we are also waiting for more teams behind. I think that soon could have Sturatuna and then Linné as well. Mm, here we have leading up. And this is Maria Olausen for Sturatuna. Elin Monson for IFK Göteborg, third team. And this, I guess, is Linnea uh, Pia Jungvik. The gap at the changeover to 39. Now it's 227, so only nine seconds faster here on the first, first controls. So a good start for the first teams here. Uh, managed to get to keep the gap open, to keep the gap more than two minutes big between those first four teams and uh, chasing teams with Sara Livong, Marie Olaus, and Eli Monson and Pia Young V. And they also had Alexandra Hornik for Iktisa 307 behind. And more teams to come. Uh, this should be Ikuope. Annika Simonsen. And the leading, te leading teams, they are now heading out to the long leg to control seven. Uh, According to the GPS, they're still more or less together. Mm, 
You can see that uh, on the GPS just before the control we have in the picture file shopping and EQUA with problems. Alice Wahlberg for file shopping and Fanny Sundblad for EQUA. Actually, not sure if Eko has punched the control and just taking a kind of strange route to the next control. Foul shopping definitely is still looking for the control. Yes, indeed. Here we have Eko. She was heading out to the path again. But didn't miss the control. So there behind we have Falschöping and Westervik. Look, still looking for the control. I think they got it now. At least uh, Falschöping. Here we have Orion. Into 12th position. Uh, Eman Emilson 5.22 behind. Soon we should have Fal Sharping here. Here she is. So here we have the replay of the beginning of this long leg to control seven. You can see that the four leading teams still together. Choosing to take the path in the beginning. It's the same route so far as we had the leading teams taking on the first and second leg. You can see that uh, interesting a bit more behind Sturatuna going more to the south. Heading to the path there. I guess Mario Lausen will take the path and run on it for quite a while just to the place south to the cotton area that's my guess you can also see that Dictisa choosing to go to the north so now we really they're really splitting up behind there So here we have Ingrid Lundernes. In the lead. And actually they split it up. Uh, Kiemuko and IFK Göteborg. So we have Lundernes running over this cutting area here quite straight. And we have Tilde Backlund going to the north of this marsh as we have seen them running on the second leg. Ja, 
So here you can see it. Uh, that they split it up. You can see three of the runners to the south. Jefko, Göteborg, Pan Kristianstad and Kore and Gemuka a bit more to the north. Don't expect it to be a very big difference. You can see that Stura Tuna and Marie Olausen keeping the tactics she had in the beginning to go all the way around, now staying on this path for a very long time. And in the top there you can see it didn't really matter. Uh, Majona and the FK Göteborg, they will get more or less together again on the top of the hill. So here we're waiting at the control for the leading teams. And it should be here very soon. Guess that the IFK Göteborg will come to the control a bit more from the left compared to Pan Kristianstad and uh, Gemuko. It seems also as if Kore is losing contact to the other teams. And here we have IFK Göteborg, Ingrid Lundanes. Where are the others? There they are, Olivia Nilsson for Pan Kristianstad. Where is Tilde Backlund? So, uh, anyway, there she is. Uh, here's IFK Göteborg punching in the lead. Uh, just in front of uh, Gemuko. And the Pan Kristianstad. And interesting now, how big is the gap compared to Kore? You can see there are small, small gaps, and uh, even though you can see the runner in front of you, it's tough to close those gaps physically. Here's Kore, Wendela Söderqvist. Ah, but she lost more than half a minute on this long leg. So next teams we are waiting for a leading a Stora Tuna, IFK Göteborg third team, Linnea. The gap there at the first TV control or at the first split time, two minutes and ten seconds compared to leading a. Uh, 218 compared to Marie Olausen, and here she comes into the picture. She had this extremely 
for Rude Choice uh, compared to the others, but it seems to pay off here. She was 218 behind. Now it seems to be just around two minutes. Punching there into fifth position. Two minutes and two seconds behind. We also have Linné, Pia Jungvik, 207. It was 239 at the start. And even though half a minute is quite much, uh, we are almost halfway through on this third leg. And of course, uh, another half minute won't be enough until the finish. So I guess they have to do a mistake in the lead in order to get the others get in contact again and it looked good for all of them at the first control just after this TV control we also know that the very last controls they will be unforked on this last leg so that will make it even tougher for the teams behind for Stura Tuna and Linnea to get in contact again but let's take uh, Iktisa to eighth here at the second TV control 306 behind Alexandra Hornik Here we have Ico Hoppe, Annika Simonsen, still waiting for Lidinge. Four minutes now, and nine teams have punched at this control number seven on the last leg. And it seems to be a fight between three teams for the victory today. Göteborg Majorna, IFK Göteborg and Pan Kristianstad. Still all of them together. Here we have uh, Eko, still waiting for leading her, Sara Livon. Uh, but it's going to be 10th position here for Eko, on his own blood. Around 5 minutes and 20 seconds behind. And this is the replay of the leading teams. You can see that they all have the same forking here first. This closest one, the stone. You can see also here they had the same forkings and from this point here there shouldn't be any forkings left for those three teams in the lead or for any team on the third leg. So now it's just the fight head to head between Pankri Hanstad, Giemuko and IFK Göteborg. And of course, as a runner, you are very much aware of the fact that it's usually unforked in the very end of a relay competition. So I think all of them are quite into this situation that it's going to be uh, those small tactical things. And uh, of course, the physical ability that's going to decide here on this last controls.
And you can see that the gap between the top teams and uh, Stora Tuna Linnea still, um, yeah, still two minutes at least. And you don't have it on the screen here, but Linnea is just ahead of Stora Tuna, so they are running together. Good route there of the top teams going around to the northwest uh, around the hill. Mm -hmm. And from here, I think it's about seven, eight minutes left to the finish. Um, looking on my watch, we'll be here just before 11.30. So we'll just make it before the start of the men's relay to the finish. Now choosing to go slightly different directions. Hard to say which of the controls they had there, if they need to have this stone. Or if they are just splitting up a bit to the next control. I think they are splitting up a bit uh, with Mayana going a bit more straight, holding the red line. And the other two teams uh, trying to avoid this stony part in between the controls. And just behind you can see that Stura Tuna, Stura Tuna, IFK Göteborg third team and also Linnea. They are getting closer and closer to Kore. In fact, I can tell you that Linnea just a few meters behind Kore. Uh, so Pia Jungvik really close to Kore now and the fourth position. But the gap is too big for Linnea in order to get in contact again with the leading teams if they don't make a big mistake at one of the last controls. This section we can see here, it's just uh, about where they are, you can see it here. All of the teams together still. Hildebaklund may be a bit far to the east to this control. Good work for Ingrid Lundanes and IFK Göteborg. Oh no, uh, I was wrong actually with the colors here. It was uh, Tilde Backlund who had a good direction and it was IFK Göteborg just a few meters behind. And uh, well now there's a small gap of about three seconds between the teams. Maybe we can uh, spot them with the camera just in a few seconds. So now it's only three controls left. So 
Second last control, you have to be careful with direction. That's a tricky one on the last leg when you have uh, high speed. Uh, I mean, you won't miss it by much, but if you miss it by three, four seconds, that can just be enough. I think that we, yeah, we can see them heading into the forest right here. It was hard to say who the different runners were just from seeing them here on the screen. We'll get uh, times at the second last control from the radio control and the pre-warning and then for sure we will see them in the picture at the last control. You can see them, uh, still all of them together would be very surprising if they wouldn't get together at least close to the last control. So it's all a fight between Tilde Backlund, Ingrid Lundanes and Olivia Nilsson. Uh, and uh, Tilde Backlund seems to be the one in the lead for Göteborg Majorna at the third last control now heading south towards this second last control and you can see you can almost feel how the speed is increasing now Han Kristianstad a few steps behind there might be quite kind of a decision uh, for this victory today but we have the two teams from Gothenburg in the lead and now it's very important for, for all of them to get good direction to control to the second last control you get this small green area just before and now i have the punch there at the second last control as well we have tilde backlund for Göteborg Majorna in the lead three seconds ahead of ingrid lundanes uh, so the gps is a little bit behind here and olivia nilsson 10 seconds behind the backlund so if Göteborg Majorna and the fk Göteborg are managed to get a good direction to the last control it should be all between the two teams from gothenburg so let's wait here at the last control for either the black colors of Göteborg Majorna or the blue and white for ifk Göteborg or even the orange for Pan Krihanstad. So let's see, there we have a blue and white for IFK Göteborg and we have the black for Göteborg Mayana. So it's all between the teams from Gothenburg. They're punching the last control there and now in the running on the very last meters right now advantage for Göteborg Majorna and it looks very good for the club from Gothenburg in black to get a historically a victory here in the very first competition of the Swedish Relay League only a few meters left for Göteborg Majorna and I think it's gonna be the victory for Eleonora Alinder, Eva Önhagen, Jörgensen and Tilde Backlund Punching in the finish right there, just a few meters ahead of IFK Göteborg with Victoria Hesta Björnstad, Johanna Kjellvik, Löfven and Ingrid Lundanes. A very good performance of, from both of the teams here in the very end. No mistakes at all, not even a few seconds uh, getting the advantage over Pan Kristianstad punching into third there. Uh, Hanna Müller on the first leg, Alva Björk on the second leg with a very, very strong performance and Olivia Nilsson running the, the last leg for Pan Krihansta into third position. Uh, very uh, very satisfied there for Pan Krihansta, but of course, what the finish here between the teams from Gothenburg. I mean, there's a lot of prestige in that fight as well. So that was an important one for Tilde Backlund uh, taking home this first ever competition in the Swedish Relay League to Gothenburg and to 
uh, Göteborg Majorna. And the next teams we are waiting for. Uh, actually, I think it's going to be between uh, Ukulinia and Stura Tuna. Uh, we also have EFK Göteborg third team there, just in between. But it should be Linnea. Yeah, here she is. Yeah, Youngvik. And just behind there, you can see Marie Olausen for Stura Tuna. And a few seconds behind, IFK Göteborg, third team. Uh, will it be a sprint finish here between Linnea and Stura Tuna? Should be enough for Linnea in order to get this fourth position. Yes, indeed. Here she is. Taking the red and blue colors for the team from Uppsala into fourth position. Strong performance here. Uh, started 239 behind and uh, finishes here 227 behind into fourth position, just ahead of uh, Stora Tuna and Marie Olausen. And also, of course, a very strong performance by the third team from IFK Göteborg into sixth position, Elin Monson. And the uh, last team here, I think we get before the start of the men's relay into seventh position, uh, UK Kåre with Vendela Söderqvist. So now we are changing over uh, a bit longer running times for the women. So now we, let's change to the men's race straight, uh, straight away. Uh, we have Hageby. Quite a strong team there when you think about the fact that we have short legs. Uh, and quite, three quite strong runners as well. Uh, Kukore with a strong team. Ravinen. Also one of the favorites, but then here, maybe the biggest favorite of them all, uh, Stora Tuna UK, uh, starting with Henrik Johannesson. Gustav Sparvik uh, running the first leg for Umeå. Odin Ek for Nyköping. Another strong team for Stora Tuna with Ves Jesper Svensk on the first leg. And in the men's relay, we have 194 teams, so really many teams here for this first competition of the Swedish Relay League. Uh, there were not any struggles there, no, I don't think so. So all of them now on their way on the first leg. 6.9 kilometers for the men, so one kilometer more than the women's relay. With a shorter first control for the men. Uh, quite a short one, actually. I hope they, there won't be too much chaos at the first control, right, starting right into a green area with a forking. Maybe uh, talking a bit about the favorites here, I mentioned it before, Stura Tuna having a very strong team with Henrik Johansson, Viktor Svensk and Emil Svensk. Emil Svensk, the winner from yesterday. Ravinen, Emil Granqvist, Axel Granqvist and Gustav Bergman. IFK Göteborg, Hovart Sandstad, Eidsmo, Max Peter Beimer and Elias Jonsson. And uh, Kåre Eskil Kinneberg, Isak von Krysenstjärna, Jonas Gustafsson, Linje, Oskar Hagström, Luka Bassi and Albin Riedefeld. And here in, on the screen you can see again the results, the final results of the women's relay after three legs with the winners from Göteborg Majorna. And this is how it looks like when you send out 194 teams 
into a forest, into a green area with a short first control. So you can see that actually here they have the control, you can see it on the upper right corner, how runners are heading to the right suddenly. I guess that's where the control is located. One of them at least, there are three controls in this green bit. And just after this uh, green area, there is a uh, forbidden part. So either, either you have to go all to the right, as you can see many of the runners here doing, or then you can run something in between. But you can see that many, many of the runners decide to take the path around the, the one we have seen the women's taking towards their first control. Jag är en glad och nöjd seger in här Tine Backlund för du tittar in i kameran så alla ser dig här. Ja, seger och vi tror sista sträcka. Ja, nej men det är jätteroligt. Mina eh, kamrater sprang ju jättebra första och andra då kände jag att nu får jag ju leverera här. Det var en tight sträcka där ni har sett varandra hela tiden. Det kändes som Lundarnäs Ingrid låg lite före vi, när vi såg på tv-kamerorna, men det var inte mycket. Ja, när vi såg varandra nog hela banan så. Sen hade man någon egen gaffel och sen så kom man ihop igen så det var... Väldigt peppigt att se alla andra. Hur gick tankarna ute i skogen när ni visste att ni förstod ju att ni var i täten? Jag tror inte att jag fattade det faktiskt. Jag fick för mig att det var några till där framför. Så jag tänkte att jag och Ingrid kanske låg så runt fjärde platsen ungefär. Så jag blev nog inte stressad på det sättet. Ni har inte haft några tekniska missar eller så under loppet? Nej, äh, jag har inte missat någonting äh, alls tror jag. Hur gick avslutningen till då? Det, vi såg ju när det kom här, det var tajt hela vägen in. Fick du stämpla det först vid sista kontrollen eller vad var, plan, vad var planen i slutet? Ja, jag fick lite ångest där inför en spurtstid så tänkte jag att man skulle försöka rycka lite tidigare men det orkade jag ju inte. Så då blev det spurt ändå. Eh, så då var det bara köra. Är det första spurtsegen du har gjort eller det är en van Tine Backlund på att spötta om segen eller? Nej, det, det ska jag inte säga. Det är. Jag, jag har nog jag tycker inte att svurtstid är så roligt faktiskt, så jag brukar försöka undvika det. Och det är inte bara bäst av alla lag nu här i landet, det bäst i Göteborg blev det också. Ja, det är nog den viktigaste segern här idag. <laughs> det låter vara det. Men jag tycker vi tar upp en jätteapplåd för Tine Backlund och hennes GMOK. CG är den första deltävlingen i Sverigeligan. Stort grattis. Tack så mycket. Mm, of course, that helps with keeping the nerves if you're not aware of the fact that you're in the lead. Uh, towards the last control and uh, as I mentioned before very prestigious to be the first team within the city but here we have the camera again on the first bit in the men's relay and they are approaching the first common control Here you can see a recap. That's the first control, the forked one in the green area we have seen from above. Then you can see that you have to go either straight through the green or all the way around. And of course, if you go to the north, you can keep north of the green area as well. And uh, the second control was that first common control before they split up again. Um, two forked ones before I think we get them to the TV control. At around control five. Men i den andra platsen är inledningen på Sverige ganska gudkänd. 
inte då. Ja, det tror jag. Och sen är du lite tyst av misslagen här okay, också, men vi får... And you can see that uh, most of the teams still together here. Uh, keep in mind that there are really many teams without GPS devices as well. And uh, I expect many of those teams to be somewhere around here between the teams with the GPS devices. Um, I was talking about that before in the women's relay. The terrain is quite open, visibility is good, they are short legs. Um, of course, that allows many of the teams to keep within the group. At least throughout the first leg, maybe throughout the second leg, and let's see if we can have a similar uh, development of the relay as we had in the women's relay, where we had a close race for the first leg, but then we got fewer and fewer teams after the second leg and then into the third one. I think I can see the first teams approaching. This is Eskil Schinneberg for Uka Kåre. It has a small gap here, a few seconds. Behind I can see Uka Linné. Oskar Hagström, I guess it is. So now uh, keep an eye on the results there because I won't be able to tell all, name all of the runners. Ole Boström for Järla into third, Edwin Nilsson, Järfälla. Yet the second team for Stora Tuna. Yvke Göteborg Hagaby here. Tisaren. Stora Tuna. So many, many teams here. Now we have yeah, around 50 teams within one minute. Of course, if you are a bit behind here as one of the favorites, um, you have many runners in front of you that help you with direction and so on, but it's also quite tough to run and pass so many runners so you would really like to be in uh, one of the let's say top 20 30 spots here at the very beginning of the race Now we had uh, 120 of 194 teams within uh, two minutes. And uh, the leader, Eskil Schinneberg, was actually able to open a gap of nine seconds. I mean, that's not very much, but if you are chased by 193 other runners and still get away with nine ten seconds uh, shows at least that you have a quite good day physically And I can tell you that uh, now uh, the first teams are approaching another common control from where we have a, a long leg again, not similar to the one that we had in the women's race, but it's almost equally long and maybe even a bit longer. Men 
Vilket innebär ju också får det allra först och stämta med något om 8 mål 4 alltså. Tänk 9 minuter slöpt i så att han är minuten snabbare redan fram dit. Så att det går undan rejält där ute. So now there are only 20 teams missing of the 194 teams that started. And we only had four and a half minutes from the moment when uh, Eskil Shinneberg punched for Ukokore. So this is the standing here uh, at the first TV control Eskil Schinneberg nine seconds ahead of Oscar Hagström for Linnea and uh, ten seconds ahead of Ole Boström representing Jälla orientering. Uh, first team of uh, Stora Tuna, Henrik Johansson, uh, 27 seconds behind, and also IFK Göteborg just behind uh, Henrik. Uh, and You can see the watch in the lower right corner, 14 and a half minutes has passed since the start. Uh, the runners, the teams, they almost all of them, or at least the top teams, are on the long leg now, as we can see it here. Uh, they split it up a bit in the very beginning, a few of the teams keeping north to the green area, and a few of them, as you can see, Kore and IFK Göteborg, going more to the east, uh, taking this part with good runnability and open forest in order to get to the path. Uh, now they will follow the path for a while and then head towards the control just on the bottom of this hill located by a stone. It's actually quite a difference if you went to the right or not. You can see it there. I would guess that it is about 20 seconds. And here we have them running on the path. Towards this eighth con eight control. And it seems as if uh, Kore is still in the lead. You can see interesting there as well. Yevko Göteborg as maybe the only team heading over the Katten area towards the path early. Yeah, we have Halden a bit behind doing something similar. Uh, we'll have to fight through a little bit of a greener bit in order to get to the control though. So I think it's a good, still a good option for Kore and the teams behind. Vi 
kan väl säga resultatet då i sexomklasserna som var mitt gick i mål här mitt i allt annat när det startade om målgångar. Men i så very soon they will head into this area where we had the second TV control in the women's race. They will approach this second TV control from the north and not from the south uh, as we had the women approaching it. And I think they're going to be quite much faster than predicted because the running time, the predicted running time to that point was 22 minutes. Now they were out for 17 and a half. I would say it's about three minutes left uh, in order to get there, a bit depending on what forking you have. But very, very fast opening here, fast beginning from the teams in the lead. You can see you can see it so first now they punch this eight control and then there's a forked one then the next one to the so south that's going to be the tv control You can see that it is Kore and Linné, Eskil Kinneberg, uh, Oskar Hagström. Oskar Hagström, a new name in orienteering, earlier Oskar Sjöberg, uh, just in case you wonder. A uh, small mistake now. I'm not sure if he has control over distance, uh, Oscar. Turning a bit early. So either the GPS is very wrong or he is uh, off direction. But uh, let's change to this first or second TV control. Here is Oscar. Uh, or it seems as if the GPS was very wrong because he is first here. Uh, punching this TV control in the lead just ahead of uh, Eskil Kinneberg for Kora. And in third we have uh, Ika Listen uh, with Mikko Erola, then Jälla, Ole Boström, Farum Tisvilde, Jakob Steintal. And here we have Stora Tuna, Henrik Johansson now only 17 seconds behind. We also have IFK Göteborg with Howard Sandstad Eidsmo. And another team, another team among the favorites, Uko Ravinen, Emil Granqvist, 32 seconds behind. And now you can see that uh, the gaps are a bit bigger here after this forking. Of course, not huge gaps, but um, there are a few seconds between each of the groups in the beginning. Hageby punching here. Victor Larsson, one minute and 20 seconds behind. Det går riktigt, riktigt 
And you can see there that the time for Oscar Hagström, 20 minutes and 16 seconds. Uh, as I said, predicted 22 minutes. So very, very fast this race. So all the runners that punched here between position 40 and 50, they were actually on the predicted time. Soon two and a half minutes since we had the punch from Linnea at this second TV control. And we have uh, 75 teams punched. Um, if you take a look at the top teams again, so after this uh, TV control, there was another forking. And uh, then just after that, a uh, bit of a longer leg where you could either go uh, to the left around the green area or to the right. And we can see that the teams actually are splitting up there. Be interesting to see. Uh, it's going to be fastest on that one. So here you can see it first, this forking, just after the common control at the TV control, and then a bit of a longer leg to the next one and you can see many of the teams heading to the left of course if you have the control most up the hill it's quite obvious to go there but you can see that it is a good option for Jöngena and Denzel to go to the right of the green area of course now Kore and IFK Göteborg and also Linie Ravinan, they get uh, to run on the path a bit. Have to do a bit of climbing on it, though. Interesting to see if Denzel is choosing to go all the way around the green area or if they will follow the vegetation border and then cut through as Kore and uh, the other teams in the group are forced to do. Uh, seems to be hesitating a little bit there, Denzel. Up there for quite a while. I wonder what happens. Uh, the other teams in the dark green area don't lose so much speed. Det är 
Standings again at the second TV control. Still Kore up there, still Linné up there. Ole Boström doing a good race here for Järla as well. Uh, we have many of the top teams within uh, half a minute with uh, Göteborg, Stora Tuna as well. Mm -hmm. The running time right now, 28 minutes. Um, given the fact that they were around two minutes faster to the second TV control, I would expect them to get to the changeover after around 33 minutes. Maybe something 33-34. You can see here that still Kore and Eskil Schinneberg going very strong in the lead. You can see Linnea. You can see Jöingena. Svante Selin. Very good performance here on the first leg in this home terrain. Just a few seconds behind, we had a, a second group with uh, IFK Göteborg, Farum Tisvilde, Stora Tuna and Ravinan. They seem to be heading a bit further to the northwest compared to the other teams, which all seem to go to the most southern option. Stura Tuna hesitating a bit. They seem to be the only team having maybe the stone in the middle. Mm. Has to be careful now in order to not lose contact with the best, with the top teams. Uh, Hendrik Johansson hesitating a little bit into his working of course it's a special situation if most of the other teams at least the ones with the gps device have another control and you're all alone on your option and you can also see that it seems as if the option to the very south uh, might be a little bit faster because you don't have to do any of the climbing uh, it's a bit easier to get the controls on top of the hill compared to when you have to head down to the slope, uh, especially when it's a small crack you have to get because you don't see the control just behind it when you head down the slope. But this is Eskil Schinneberg. For Kore we can see Oskar Hagström as well. And we can see Jöingerna, the Svante Selin actually in the lead now. For him, of course, uh, not running for one of the favorite teams. 
is to win this first leg. I think he will go all in for that one. Great performance for Svante. So this control they're heading up to now is uh, forked one again. And then they're going down to the second last control where we have uh, the pre-warning and second last to last exactly the same control as in the women's race. So 32 minutes the running time, 32 and a half. Not that much off the predicted time as expected uh, at the second TV control. But definitely closer to the predicted time as we had uh, in the women's race. So very soon we should get the runners to the pre-warning. Still no punch at the pre-warning. So we are waiting for Kore, we are waiting for Jöngena, and we are waiting for Linnea. Uh, Svante Silien, Eskil Schinneberg and Oskar Hagström. Uh, here you can see Max Peter Beimer, the winner of the long distance on Friday. We'll head out for IFK Göteborg. And now we got the punch from the three teams and still we have Svante Selin for Göringen in the lead but he punched at the exact same time as Oskar Hagström for Linné. And uh, only one second, be second behind we have Uko Kore as well as Gil Schinneberg. And then it's eight seconds between Kore and Farum Tisvilde and Jakob Tal. So let's wait here at the last control and let's see if Jöngena and Svante Selin maybe can get uh, the victory on the first leg to the organizing club uh, FK Jöngena. They should be here very soon. Here we have them, and it is actually Jöngena awesome. uh, coming here, Svante Selin, uh, and uh, just ahead of Linnea Oskar Hagström and uh, Kore Eskil Schinneberg. But what a first leg by Jöngena and Svante Selin, who will uh, win this first leg here just by a few seconds, I guess. Very, very good performance. Forty-five, thirty-seven, the time or thirty-six for Svante Selin from Jöngena and uh, Oscar Hagström punching into second position for Ukulinia and Shinneberg changing over in third, just behind there. They got a bit closer again, Stora Tuna. Farum Tisvilde, IFK Göteborg, Olle Boström for Järla and Ravinen punch there as well. Here we have Mika uh, Erola, I think it is, for team from Ica Listenosova Voima and Tampren Pyrinta. So if you look at the runners heading out now, it is uh, Elia Kjempe for FK Göringarna, Luka Basse for Linnea, Isak von Krusenstjärna for Kåre, Victor Svensk for Sturatuna, Malte Kjär Hemmingsen 
Farum Tisvilde, Max Peter Beimer, IFK Göteborg and Oscar Björk Järla and uh, Axel Grandquist for Ravinen and here we have other teams uh, coming here into 10th we have Ravinen's second team and then there's quite a big group behind so there was a gap between the first nine teams and the rest coming here Big gap between 9 and 10, and uh, then uh, quite a big group from 10 to 23. Here we have Tisaren. Oskar Andrén, Atunda, second team. Eksjö, Törving, Kristianstad, Nyköping, Ronneby. So 30 teams within two and a half minutes. Uh, there behind I can spot Hageby as well. Punching there. Victor Larsson in 33rd position, 248 behind. Soon four minutes since we had the leader from Jöingla Svante Selin, who actually won the men 20 race yesterday. Quite a big gap, so uh, still a junior Svante Selin. Showing the seniors here just how fast he is already in this kind of terrain. Uh, hear a bit maybe from Svante Selin. Emma Löpan här sett alla på plats, alla seniorerna. Du verkar vara i en sanslös form. Ja, det känns bra för sist. Det var kul att lyckas lägga in ett ryck på slutet och ta dem faktiskt. Du sa att det var väldigt tufft i början och du kom lite efter. Var det väldigt missad du eller? Nej, alltså det var lite gafflat och ja, jag tyckte aldrig på riktigt hot i början så jag hamnade en bit bak i klungan. Men sen bara jobbade jag på och så märkte jag att jag har kommit fatt de som var lite längre fram och sen insåg att vi var i ledningen så det var kul. Hur kändes det då? Jo det var bra, det var skönt. Du hade väl bestämt det här i slutet när du förstod att du var i täten att det var inte till seger och var först in på första sträckan? Ja jag var sugen var jag, jag hade rätt mycket kraft också. Jag var varit lite trött på mitten men sen kändes det som att jag fick tillbaka lite kraft och så kunde jag lägga in en stöt här så ja det var kul. Vad, gör, vad händer med djungarna nu? Vad skickar man ut för någon på andra sträckan? Uh, eller jag kämpe skickar vi ut. Uh, varken Borsan eller Noa Krig som kunde springa men uh, ja, vi har rätt bra lag ändå så jag hoppas det ska gå bra. Ja, det kan ju bara gå. De har blivit laddade nu. De har blivit sint in första sträckan. Precis, de har nog sugna. Ja, men det är härligt. Du har imponerat oerhört. Så jag tycker vi tar en jätteapplåd för Svante Selin och FK Göringarna som leder då Sverigeligans härklass efter första sträckan. Tack. Mm. Didn't have the best start into the race, but uh, really could turn it around towards the end when he got in contact with the others and uh, as I mentioned of course if you're running for a team that's not fighting for the overall victory today then uh, maybe you were willing to a bit 
to put a bit in a bit more effort and a bit more risk in order to win the first leg. Mm. And this is a replay of what happened in the beginning of the second leg here. You can see that Jarla struggled a bit getting this first option. Then different route choices to control two. Still Kore, Ravinen, IFK and Jöingena in the lead. All of the teams getting into this area, this forked area, I can tell you that the Linnea is still up there as well. Had the option to the very east here, the two stones or the one of the two stones. And then uh, after this forked control, Kore is heading to, I think we're going to have them on camera again at the first TV control. So now we are here at control six, I think it is, on the second leg, waiting for the first runners to come. And here we can see Ukolun Linnea, Luca Basse. And there is another team uh, following behind. I think this is Kora, but I'm not 100% sure. Here, here we have Kora. Isaac von Krusenstierna. Uh, this is Ravinan, Granqvist and Max Peter Beimer for IFK Göteborg. So, four teams punched there. Jöingerna still up there. And Stora Tuna with Viktor Svensk. Stura Tuna 30 seconds behind, Elia Champe 26 seconds behind. This is Farum Tisvilde, Malte Kjær Hemmingsen. Now we got the graphics working as well. I think we are missing Kore, though, in this graphics. Uh, Isaac von Krusenstierna. So we actually had uh, six teams at this first TV control, and this is a big gap now. It is the gap. I think we had behind position eight at the changeover, so we are missing two teams. Uh, Ika Liste knows about Voima at the team they had together with Tampere and Pyrinto. And Jarla, I think we're missing as well. Here we have Jarla, Oscar Björk, and Tensel, Aljeda Spartkevicius, Orion coming here. Shields and Jettebor Majana, Martin Alberger, Cole Morton in between. So now we had uh, 18 teams here. If we also count Isaac von Krusenstierna, punching within 221. Philip Karlsson, 
Håll inte till den av Marius Trane Ödum. Och då har vi inne där om Edvin Forsberg, deras andra lag. 2.55 efter. Still, uh, we have almost all of the big favorite teams in this leading group. We have Linnea, we have Ravinen, we have IFK Göteborg, we have Stora Tuna. So the strongest of the teams proving here from the start that they are willing to fight for the victory. This uh, first relay of the season. At Hagerby, uh, punching there in 39th position, they have Philip Dahlgren here on the second leg and they will have Martin Rekborn on the last leg, but already more than four minutes behind. Göteborg Majernas first team, Ingen Olsson. A bit more than five minutes passed now since we had Luca Bassi Ukulinia at first TV control. We have uh, almost 60 teams here now. And uh, the top teams now on the long leg already towards this area where we are going to have the second TV control. So here again the standings after exactly 44 minutes running time for Luca Bassi. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the biggest favorites among the teams all within the top five and the clear gap between fifth and sixth position. Actually a little bit surprising. I would have expected that more of the teams would be able to keep together uh, given the fact that quite we have quite short legs and quite open terrain but the speed on the first leg was so high, set by Schinneberg, uh, set by Hagström and Celine, that we had the groups behind splitting up already. And here you can see it, uh, this is the long leg, the beginning, you can see that most of the teams went straight a bit to the east into this open area. We have Farum Tisvilde. Uh, cho choosing to go a bit more to the left uh, as we have seen on the first leg it was actually a bit faster to go to the right you can see that the Jöngena is heading over the stream straight away also Linnea Luca Bassi going to the other side of the cotton area um, but you have to fight through this green bit a little bit just before you get to the control so I think you get a smoother entrance 
if you keep to the left as uh, you see Kore and the Isaac von Krusenstierna doing You can see that uh, GPS devices for Stura, Tuna and IFK Göteborg stopped. Uh, my guess is that Farum Tisvilde will lose quite a lot going all the way around there. And it's going to be interesting to see um, how much time Luca Basia will lose choosing to change sides of the red line there early. We can also see that Jörg and heading all the way up to the hill. I mean, you get a little bit of help running around uh, on the path, but you have to climb, but then you have to drop again all the way down 20 meters and then up again to the next control. So we will definitely lose time on this one. So I think it's fair to say that from five teams at the TV control, we are down to three now because you can see that Liné is going to lose, well, maybe even a minute on this route choice. And you can also see it's a huge time loss for Farum Tisvilla. I think they were in the leading group or more or less in the leading group or uh, yeah, in the chasing group. Yeah, it wasn't actually too bad for Farum Tisvilla. I think he was together with Jarla, almost together with Jarla at the control before, so it didn't lose too much time. Mario Strani Adam. So we are waiting here at the second TV control for the leading teams and I think we can spot them there. I see a yellow jersey for Stura Tuna. I think I see the one for Kore. And the IFK Göteborg. So this is Kore. And to the left we have IFK Göteborg and Stura Tuna. Ah, Max Peter Beimer with the crash just before the control. And now we have the three teams. Stura Tuna, IFK Göteborg and Kore. And we, I, he seems to be injured. That doesn't look good. Ravinam. Axel Granqvist. Uh, that didn't look good for his hand. I hope he will get some help here at the TV control. It is stony out in the forest. It's a bit tricky when you have such good visibility, but the surface is quite stony it's uh, you would really like to push hard but um, it's hard to get coordination in this kind of terrain so we have to be careful uh, here we have luca bassi fully knee and you can see that he lost more than a minute on the route choice on this long leg Och 
en femte plats i Fötton Kusekamma. Jag tror att han springer en bricka som inte känns igen, men han är ju där. Vi känner igen honom. Så han är absolut med där, eh, Isak, för sitt okk -re. Mm. So uh, in the graphics we're missing Ukukora Isaac von Krusenstjärna, but of course we've seen him on the screen. So five teams. Have punched here and we have more than two minutes. Here we have Jöingena, not a good route choice uh, on the long leg, but still in fifth position, 2.22 behind. This looks like uh, Densen, Aljedas Partkevicius. Uh, seems like Shields behind Kolmården, Orion, Göteborg Majorna, second team, Södertälje, Gärla and Farum Tisvilla. Mario, Mario Strani Ödom punching for the second team of Farum Tisvilde. So now we have uh, 25 teams plus a uh, few teams that we haven't had in the graphics here within uh, 4 minutes and 21 seconds. And on the long leg to to control the after the next forking, we had them splitting up again. And here you can see that Grandquist uh, getting back uh, with an injured hand, uh, running towards to get help there. So here we have the standing at the second TV control, but keep in mind that uh, Kore has been punching there as well. Uh, Isak von Krusenstjärna somewhere in the leading group and uh, Ravin, and as we have seen just right now, not in the competition anymore due to some injury at uh, maybe the arm or the hand. And then we had a, quite a big gap down to Linné. And Joingana uh, as well, uh, approximately a minute behind Linnea then. And this is the recap. You can see the first teams. Here you have Isaac von Krusenstjärna in the graphics. 
uh, Ravina not on the screen, but we know that he had it back towards the arena. So different route choices for Kore, Stora Tuna and IFK Göteborg. And now look at Kore here, Isak von Krusenstjärna heading down towards the green area. Not really sure where he should head into. And just losing contact with the group. So now we have two teams in the lead, Stora Tuna and IFK Göteborg. And then about 40 seconds behind Kore. And I would guess that Linnea now is approximately one of 150 or two minutes behind. Go heading all over this hill straight up there in, in order to get to their four king and then the next one we know we have seen that on the first leg that if you have to control to the very south it's uh, a little bit faster compared to if you have to head down the slope a few meters in order to get you to your control also the teams behind you can see that there are two groups call more than yala or Jon. Went to the left as IFK Göteborg and Stora Tuna did, and Göingen and Denzel, Södertälje Nykvarn and Farum Tisvilde trying to avoid the green bit to the right. Mm, you can see there the result of different forkings between Stora Tuna and IFK Göteborg. Looks like uh, advantage for Stura Tuna now. But that's uh, exactly what we have seen from the first leg, that it was faster if you had this option. So they might have it a little more, bit longer on the last leg then. But it seems as if I'm at Peter Bame maybe is hesitating a little bit just between the controls there. At a similar place where we had uh, I think it was Henrik Johansson uh, hesitating in the first leg for Stura Tuna. So Victor Svensk punching in the lead. I think it's going to be about, yeah, you can see it there, approximately 20 seconds. I guess it's a bit more, 30 seconds. And he will be handing over to Emil Svensk, uh, the winner of yesterday's middle distance. So it looks very good for the big, big favorites for this relay today for Stora Tuna. Yeah, it looks like a blue jersey. What to say? Could be IFK Göteborg. And Max Peter Beimer. And uh, I think that Stura Tuna already passed there. You, you can see it, Max Peter Beimer. Mm, 
And now they are heading up there into the forest to the third last control, the forked one, and then second last control, the pre-warning, uh, very close to the finish. And see, soon we should be able to see Kore getting into the picture here. It's very hard to spot the runners. So we are waiting at the pre-warning for the runner. Still no punch there. Uh, maybe a small mistake by Stura Tuna. Getting to the wrong forking first. Bit of hesitation. Uh, having punched the control now, I think. Uh, Victor Svensk and now on its way and there's a little bit of time lag between the GPS and reality so now I got the punch for Victor Svensk at the pre-warning and let's see how big the gap is between Victor Svensk and Max Peter Beimer So we are waiting at the last control for Viktor Svensk and uh, at the second last control Max Peter Beimer punched 34 seconds behind Viktor Svensk so Stora Tuna 34 seconds ahead of IFK Göteborg. Uh, Max Peter Beimer will send out uh, Elias Jonsson uh, but here we have him, uh, Viktor Svensk after this very good second leg with a small hesitation just at the third last control when he got to the wrong forking first without losing a lot of time though now heading handing over to his older brother the winner from yesterday Emil Svensk he will be running the last leg for Stura Tuna and let's wait for the second team here IFK Göteborg and Max Peter Beimer 34 seconds was the gap at the pre-warning and here he is. He will send out, as I said before, Elias Jonsson. Here he punches. Uh, Victor already in the finish. Now also the punch from Isaac von Krusenstern at the pre-warning. One and a half minutes behind. Uh, Emil Svensk already on his way on this last leg, the last 6.9 kilometers of this competition and we have uh, the winner from Friday getting into the finish here, Max Peter Beimer. And the gap is 43, approximately 42 seconds between the two teams. And next to the finish will be Isaac von Krusenstjerna. Uh, one and a half minutes was the gap, as I mentioned before, at the pre-warning uh, for Uko Kora. And uh, Kore will send out uh, Jonas Gustafsson on the last leg. So 1.34 the gap between uh, IFK Göteborg and uh, no, Stora Tuna and uh, Uko Kore. He lost most of this time on this longer leg just after the second TV control when he kind of get confused just before uh, the control in the green area. Mm. 
Inget videofält ska ut på den tredje och sista sträckan för Oko Linnea. Men här har du dragit ut. And still waiting for Luca Basia. He punched at the pre-warning. 3.05 behind. Uh, so he lost a lot of time on this second leg. We remember that he was actually the first one coming to the first TV control, but then had a bad route on the long leg. Lost a lot of time there. And now he is more than or approximately three minutes behind the leaders. Uh, so it's going to be a challenge definitely for Albin Riedefeldt who is going to run this last leg for Uko Linnea. You can see more than three minutes, three minutes and uh, 13 seconds. And now we have a big group uh, that punched at the pre-warning. Group of about 10 runners uh, that will come to the finish very soon. Here we have them. Looks like Shil Suko, Ludwig Eriksson, ahead of uh, Navi. I'm not sure. You have the teams here at least. Denzel is there. And the gap here uh, between four and a half and five minutes for these clubs punching there. Uh, in the wrong lane here. So here we have Shields, we have Kofum Örebro, Göteborg Majorna, second team, Navi, Järla, Denzel. Uh, New Shopping. And here we have uh, Stora Tuna, second team, and Göingarna. And then we have uh, even a third team from uh, Stora Tuna in the top 15, Ville Johansson and Magne Daly for Halden. And we uh, had 20 teams uh, within five and a half minutes. Ja, ja, men sen fått upp SSK Perberg blir en vana. Vi pratar varje dag, Viktor. Ja, men det är trevligt. <laughs> Stora, tunga favoriter, Tuna som vanligt. Och ni verkar inte mentalt störda av det, utan ni bara springer på och går rätt och springer från de andra. Ja, men vi trivs väl, trivs väl med i snacket innan. Jag tycker vi är kul. Och Henk mm. gjorde ju jättet på första så fick ut fint utgångsläge. Vad har, har du haft ute på sträckan? Ni var tillsammans inledningsvis väldigt mycket. Sen kändes det som att du fick en uh, liten lucka här på slutet och hanterat själv. Ja, men jag var lite stressig inledning. Missade lite in, inledningsvis och hamnade lite efter. Men jag såg dem, såg dem framför mig och försökte gå i kapp utan att gå allt för hårt ut och spränga mig. Så, eh, sen tror jag hade lite snäll gaffling på slutet så jag fick luckan på grund av det. Då. Så aldrig Max Peter någon gång eller du vände där kanske inte om? Jo, men jag såg han... Eh, ja, det var, jag vet inte hur långt det var kvar, men vi vände hemåt. Jag och hygge och så. Eh, då såg jag att jag var bakom det. Men sen hade jag som sagt en, en snäll gaffling kändes som... 
För det känns att Max hade inget problem att hänga med fartmässigt så att det var nog därför vi kluckan. Du har gett Storbror och Emil nu en liten lucka. Räcker det? Ja, men jag hoppas ändå. Han gjorde det bra tekniskt igår så jag hoppas han inte får ut alla hjärnceller igår och har lite kvar till idag. Ja, du var ju ganska sliten sa du tre tuffa dagar nu men vältränade kroppar ska åka detta också. Ja, precis. Man ska ju ska åka med det men man känner att man kanske inte är helt van att tävla så benen har fått sitt den här helgen. Du är nöjd med helgen förstår jag. Ja, men det är ett stabila lopp. Alla var väl stabila så jag är nöjd med. Det låter bra. Då önskar vi dig och Stora Tuna lycka till resten ja. av dagen. Tack så jättemycket. Jättebra. Alltså Viktor Svensk då först in på andra sträckan i Sverigeligan här på här sidan. Mm. And as we heard, Viktor Svensk, we already have Emil Svensk to the first TV control. Made a good start of the race. Punching right there and uh, let's see now how big the gap is. It was 42 seconds at the changeover compared to IFK Göteborg. And here he is, uh, Elias Jonsson, so the gap is definitely not bigger. Good, very good start for IFK Göteborg. 37 seconds behind, 5 seconds faster. Here in the beginning. And uh, now we're waiting for Kåre. They went out 134 uh, behind Stora Tuna, Jonas Gustafsson for Kåre. Should see him very soon. Feeling is that he lost a few seconds in the beginning. Mm, now we have it 134, so now he's definitely losing time compared to Svensk, also compared to Jonsson. Still can't see Jonas Gustafsson yet. Lost half a minute so far. Here he is. Uh, here he is. Uh, it's almost up to a minute. Say maybe 50 seconds he lost here on the first controls. On the first six controls of the course. And the next team to show up here should be Linné. So this is the recap. Maybe we can see why or where uh, Jonas Gustafsson lost time. So Stura Tuna straight into the control. No problems at all. No problems for IFK Göteborg either. Different route choices out. Uh, no real problems there for Kåre either. Small, small mistake for Stora Tuna at the second control, but it might have been the five seconds. Yeah, maybe a little bit longer option here for Kore compared to the other teams. Could have chosen to run a bit more around the hilly bits. And as Gustafsson, interesting now, how will they do on the long leg? It seems as if Stura Tuna is going to the left. Um, we know it's a good option to go a bit to the right, gr around the green, but let's take Albin Riedefeldt for Linné. 
to the TV control. The gap now, four minutes and four seconds. Uh, the gap was uh, three minutes and 13, so we lost quite a lot of time uh, as well. Albin Riedefeldt. And now we are waiting for the group, for a quite big group. With, let's see, Shields, Kofi Mörebro, Göteborg Majorna, second team, Järla, Navi, Denzel. Yeah, New Shopping. And Stora Tuna, second team. And then we have a few more teams, but those are the teams that should show up her here first. And the gap was four and a half minutes. So also those teams, they lost time compared to the leaders. Here we have Halden. Guillemelia had a very good run uh, on Friday in the long distance. Ingena and uh, Navi, I think it was. Yes, indeed. Järla, Göteborg Majorna, second team. Densen and Shields. Anton Johansson for, for Orion. Six minutes have passed now. You can see that many teams here uh, with a small gap in between, but most of the runners can see one runner in front of them. Here I think I can see Martin Riekborn for Hagerby. 7.40 behind. And uh, back to the leaders, you can see Stora Tuna and IFK Göteborg, both going on the same route on this long leg. We know that it would be a little bit faster to go to the right and into this open area just beside the stream, at least it was the, that was the case on the first leg. And there we had the GPS stopping for both IFK and Stora Tuna just before they get to this uh, common control. And they are back, Stora Tuna soon to punch it. Then there's this forking left uh, before we see them again at the second TV control. 
Fortuna som är Tero och Emil Svensk framme vid den här kontrollen. Slutet på långsträckan den åttonde. En gasta kontroll och sen är det ner till den andra TV-kontrollen här då på den sista sträckan. That's the standings at the first TV control and you can see we're basically up to two teams uh, fighting for the victory. I think the gap down to Kåre with two and a half minutes is too big. We haven't seen so many big mistakes today. And then you have this big group here from around five minutes behind. We have them again, you can see the gap now, it's around 50 seconds, so Jonsson uh, seems to have lost a bit of time, mostly physically because they were on the same route. Uh, Stora Tuna on the way to this middle control, as it seems. Let's see. Where Jonsson is heading to, of course, if he has to run a bit to the right, there might be the chance to win back a few seconds. And here we are waiting already for Emil Svens coming to the TV control. Looks very strong. Good speed, punching there, 128. Uh, 57. And now we are waiting for IFK Göteborg and Elias Jons on the gap at the first TV control. 37 seconds. My guess is that it's a bit more as we could see on the GPS before. Somewhere around 50 to 60 seconds. You can see him there. I uh, will be here at around 50 seconds behind. Still going quite well, but hard to win back those 52 seconds. Just physically, I think you would need a mistake, or they would need a mistake by Stora Tuna in order to get back for the fight, into the fight for the vi victory. And here behind we can see Kore and Linnea behind Albin Riedefeldt. And look at Halten there. Very, very good race by Guillaume Melia. And I think he can see Albin Riedefeldt from the position where he is right now. He will definitely see him when he is heading over this cotton area. This will be a great boost of motivation, of course. No problems for Stora Tuna at the control just after the TV control. Now we're going to see that uh, Stura Tuna going to the left of the green area. Quite sure that IFK Göteborg and Elias Jonsson are going to the right. Mm. 
And you can see the big group of teams following behind Halton and Linné. Uh, there are teams for sure in between there without GPS devices as well. Uh, let's keep an eye on Kore as well, as he seems to be heading just in between the two controls. Uh, now turning a bit. Might see this hill just at the border of the circle. Mm. We have seen that the uh, GPS was not very accurate there before, so we might have punched the control. So let's see if he's showing up on the screen within the next seconds. Going more from the left than other runners we have seen before. Uh, but he's coming here and the gap. Oh. At around four minutes, he was 2.24 behind. So he's losing time. So now we are waiting for Linné and uh, Riedefeld, but as we have seen, in the GPS here, we're also waiting for Halden and Gemelia. Mm, you can see Svensk soon approaching the green area just before the control. Yevko uh, Yatebori on the cutting area. It'll be interesting to see if he is going to round the green area or if he's going to run a bit closer towards the red line and then go through. Uh, now, a bit of hesitation from uh, Halden. Maybe not the best direction into the control. That's the chance for Linné and Albin Riedefeld to get away. Here he is. It was 4.04 behind. Now it's... Here is... So he lost two minutes between TV1 and TV2. Just shows us how fast uh, Emil Svensk is running in the lead. 6-11 behind and Gemelia. Uh, uh, 6-21 behind. At the next team, Anton Johansson, 634. He is climbing a lot. August Molin in seventh for Uke Densen. Victor Rundby, Jetmer Majana, second team. Ludwig Ek, IFK Göteborg. Jens Reynolds for Jäla. Uh, Shields, and then we have Södertälje Nykvarn and Cole Morden into 12 and 13. Seven minutes and 15 seconds behind. And uh, what an incredible speed Emil Svensk has in the lead here. If you look at the times of the runners behind, it's basically Anton Johansson and uh, Gia Melia. They can more or less match it. 
uh, but they're losing time as well. And of course, uh, Elias Jonsson, he doesn't lose a lot of time. So those two in the lead, they go really, really fast here. Ekborn into 14. He was uh, 744 behind, so he is only eight seconds slower compared to Emil Svensk. Many of the teams may be taking a bit of advantage of uh, Ekborn here. And now actually I wonder if he would get the GPS. Uh, I think there's a mistake going on by Emil Svensk. Would be very interesting to see. And this could be a very decided decisive moment right now. So this is the standings. Uh, you can see the gap here between Stura Tuna and IFK Göteborg. I can tell you it's not that way anymore. So let's see here. Uh, approaching this is the control just after the long leg. You can see Stura Tuna, Emil Svans heading over this hill towards the control and then starting to hesitate and you can see still hesitating hasn't got the control yet maybe at the wrong control now trying to get control again heading up the hill on this plateau and you can see just behind Elias Jonsson punching his control and now at this point passing uh, Stura Tuna and Emil Svensk and uh, Svensk still hasn't punched the control here and now he got it and remember back what his brother said in the interview uh, that uh, he hopes that he will get the technique together today it looked promising yesterday but uh, should Try to keep his brain cells in uh, under control, and it seems as if he didn't really manage to do so, Emil Svensk today. So now suddenly it looks very good for IFK Göteborg and uh, Emil Jonsson, Elias Jonsson, of course. Uh, it's just punched the control before this cutting area, so he should be here very soon. Those are runners running on the long leg. Uh, here he comes through the forest down to the cutting area. I'm not 100% sure he might have seen Emil Svensk at the control before when he did the mistake you can see that there is a clear clear track here already and looking at the gps i would say that the gap is almost one minute almost one minute And Emil Svensk has just punched the control before now, before heading out to this uh, cutting area. So none of these runners here uh, is Emil Svensk. I don't think we have him in the picture already. Uh, maybe here. But the gap still around 35, 40 seconds. And we have only three controls to go, so it looks very, very, very good for IFK Göteborg. Uh, see that, yeah, they should have seen each other at the control where Emil Svensk did the mistake. Kore, what are they doing? Oh, big mistake. 
Uh, I think he thought that he had rounded the green area already. And now we can see that Halden. Guillemilia now in third position. And just behind Orion. Anton Johansson as well. Very close now to this bronze spot. But let's get back to the fight for the victory. Between IFK Göteborg and uh, Stora Tuna. Uh, here we see them, and the gap is not so big anymore, definitely not the minute we had just around three or four minutes ago, but there is still a gap. Yeah, they are, of course, optimistic, but it is, it is quite close. I wonder if uh, Emi Svensk can see Elias Jonsson now, uh, but he is running really fast towards this second last control now. Uh, it's a control where we have to keep direction, but seeing the tracks we had on this cut near area, I can imagine that you get some help there with the navigation after five legs that we had towards this control. Uh, so it is all between IFK Göteborg and Stora Tuna and we have the pre-warning now for IFK Göteborg at the second last control. And we had Emil Svensk there as well. It's 18 seconds between the two of them. Uh, shouldn't be a problem for Jonsson if he's not missing this last control. And I wonder... Getting towards his last control, punching there. No other runner in sight. He can relax on this very last meters. Here he comes, Emil Svensk. Approaching the last control, punching right there. He knows that he did the mistake on the course that caused this second position and a very well executed run by Elias Jonsson leads IFK Göteborg to the victory today. It seemed as if uh, Svensk had control over the situation, as if the speed was just good enough and also the navigation, but then this one forking control made the difference. Here he is into second position for Stura Tuna. I'm sure he's not happy about that. A uh, very solid run from Elias Jonsson, I have to say. Had good speed as well and managed to keep cool when it mattered. So 18 seconds in the end. The gap between IFK Göteborg and Sturatun and you can just see how disappointed he is. <laughs> Throwing the map away just to take it up again and uh, look Again, what might have happened here? We have Halden, Elias Guillem. No problem, as it seems. He's ahead of Kore and ahead of Orion as well. Looks very good for the strong French runner in the Halden colors. So now we are live again. Very soon he will be heading out to this uh, Katten area. And we can see that the, maybe the closest runner to Elia Guillem might be Anton Johansson for Orion. But he's also almost a minute behind. Martin Rekborn for Hageby. Very close as well compared to Orion. Thank you. 
tre kontroller kvar för handen alldeles strax. Men vi har vinnarna på plats och vi har tvåarna på plats. I Budemar har alltså vunnit för Stora Tuna OK. So we can see there only two controls left for Halton. But ja, let's ja, men sen. Stort grattis, Elias, jo Elias Jonsson. Vilken debut! Ja, tack. Det var bäst, bäst tänkliga. <laughs> Hur kände du när du gick ut med Emil Svensken? Du såg han inte, men det var ju ganska tajt ändå. Nej, 40 sekunder är liksom svårt att ta in på Emil, men jag visste att han kan bomma han också. Så jag försökte ligga på redan från början och pressa det jag hade. Har du sett han någon gång inledningsvis, eller? Ja, jag såg han över några hyggeskanter när det var lite mer öppet. Så jag visste liksom att jag inte hade tappat så mycket i alla fall. Sedan när du passerade, han förstod också då att du såg väl att han hade varit nej, lite... Nej, jag visste inte att jag hade passerat. Så jag såg han först när jag stämplade på näst sista. Då liksom jag svajade lite inte den. Och så vände jag mig på vägen ut för att liksom kolla om det kom någon. Jag tänkte liksom att Emil, han är, han är framför fortfarande. Men när jag såg han bakom så fick jag lägga in i en växel till. Ja. Upp till sista. Hur kändes det på slutet av Lite skakiga ben eller det var ingen fara? Ja, jag har ju sprungit så fort jag kunde hela vägen så klart man är trött. Har en bra debut för IFK Göteborg med en stafettseger här? Ja, perfekt. Ja, övriga kompisarna gjorde det bra också. Ja, ja det är grymt bra av alla så det är ja. kul med tjejlaget också. Det låter bra. Jag tycker det var ett jättestor applåd och stort grattis till IFK Göteborg seger här alltså. Tack så mycket. He mentioned in the beginning that he saw Emil Svensk uh, once in an open area and knew that he didn't, couldn't have lost so much time, but uh, then of course realized in the very end uh, when he passed him that now he's in the lead and tried to run as quick as possible, but well, it got quite, quite tight anyway towards the finish, but uh, a great first run for his new club, IFK Göteborg. And now we are waiting for the third team. Uh, we are waiting for Halden. At the pre-warning, he's hesitating a little bit. Just before this pre-warning, as I can see on the GPS. Uh, he has been at the pre-warning now, so soon to the soon to the last control. And uh, approximately half a minute behind uh, Halden, we also got a punch from Uko Rion, Anton Johansson. But first, uh, very soon here to the last control. Here is uh, Elia Guillem, a uh, very strong French runner, punching the last control and taking Halden into the bronze medal spot at this very, very first race of the new Swedish Relay League. And then I can tell you behind we were gonna have a fight for the positions because we have Anton Jonsson uh, around half a minute behind Halden and then 20 seconds later we have one, two, three, four, five, yeah, five teams fighting for the fifth or maybe fourth position even. But first of all, maybe, maybe Anton Jonsson. Uh, there's Orion Hageby with Martin Rekbard, Uppsal orientering with Jörgen Backlid, uh, Järla med, with uh, Jens Rönnholz. Here we have uh, Anton Johansson for Orion, managed to keep the gap. He had a pre-warning, going to fourth position and just behind there you can see Martin Rekborn for Hageby. So, fourth position for Orion, fifth for Hageby. And there is a fight for the sixth position, no seventh position, between Södertälje uh, and Järla. So, sixth to Uppsala orientering. Jörgen Backlid, Södertälje nu kvar med Johan Eklarsson on seven and Järla with the Jens Rönnholz into 8th position and this the last team within the top 10. Uh, 
Yes, uh, August Molin for Denzel, just one position behind IFK Göteborgs uh, third team with Ludvig Ek. So with this, uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, just after we had the top 10 in the men's relay to the finish. It was a double Gothenburg day in this uh, first competition of the Swedish Relay League where we had the winners in the women com women's competition from Göteborg, Mayana and now here in a very exciting last bit of the competition. Uh, IFK Göteborg and Elias Jonsson taking it all to Gothenburg. Uh, we will be back tomorrow already for the Sprint Relay Championships from France. So tune in there as well. And otherwise, when it comes to the Swedish Relay League, next competition is going to be Stig Domta Kaveln uh, at the weekend of 13th and 14th of April. So I hope you enjoyed this race today. I wish you a nice Sunday afternoon and I hope to see you soon again. Bye bye.
Han har gått till 12 minuter sedan med segerlaget i Göteborg i sväng mål som segrare. Då kan man hämta kartorna bakom målet i de här tassbossarna, klubbpossarna. Så ni kan hämta kartor nu om ni är sugna på att se alla misstag eller vad vägval ni har gjort. Och som sagt, priset är ni. Om några nu ni ser så att ni som ska ha pris får gärna komma fram här. Vi börjar med damlagen. Det är Göteborg Majorna, IFK Göteborg, Tanke Schanta och Colini Stora Tuna och IFK Göteborg lag 3. Ni sex lagar ska vi börja med här, så ni får gärna samla er här fram till storbilden inom några minuter. Och som sagt, omstarten 13.30 idag. Jag förstår beredda där nere. Springer väl iväg i detta nu gör de då. De återstående här när jag.
Erik Gottfolk, prisutdelning ska avsluta den här trevliga helgen med en prisutdelning här i Stafettligan. Och vi börjar med damklass idag. Jag hoppas att de här sex lagen är på plats här. Så ska vi köra den. Och eh, dagens prisutdelare är ju Susanne Morup som ska dela ut priserna här. Förbundschef är det väl, så är det. Så heter det. Ja, vi ska dra igång här. Jag hoppas att ni samlar er så ska vi få eh, hylla de här duktiga löparna. Vi börjar alltså med dagklassen här då. Inledande på eh, Sveriges affetten. Och på en eh, sjätte plats i den klassen då. IFK Göteborg 3, Malin Agevi Kristiansson, Klara Axelsson och Elin Månsson. Stafettligan, ja förlåt mig, Stafettligan och inget annat. Det ska alltså vara Stafettligan här på pappret ser jag. Har vi fram Göteborg, ja. På en femte plats då, Dora Tuna och Kåk, Rebecka Heinrup, Tilda Uppberg, Marie och Larsson. Kommer här, ja. På en eh, fjärde plats. På Uppsala, Oko Linné. Annik Meister, Susanne Lösch, Pia Jongvik. Och så då, vi lättrar det på pallen. Och det gör vi med laget som kommer på tredje plats. Man kommer från Skåne och går på fark i Fanta. Anna Müller, Alva Björk och Lydia Nilsson. Och eh, på en annan plats, det var ju tajt där, men eh, på på den här stafettligan då, IFK Göteborgs första lag, Victoria Hälsad Jönsson, Johanna Kjellvik Löfven och Ingrid Lundanäs. Och så då segern till på den här första deltävlingen i stafettligan 2024, det laget kommer från Göteborg, det heter Göteborg Majorna. Och så då Susanne Morup, förbundschefen, ska dela ut priserna här till pristagarna. till de tre första lagen. Ja, då gör vi så att vi ger alla damerna en jätteapplåd här för den fina insatsen här nere i Skåne och Jöngarnas tävling. Då ska vi också välja pris här innan ni lämnar sig. Jag tror vi börja med segelaget här, Majorna.
Vi kommer också då över till här sidan, även om de har nyss gått i mål här, men jag tror att de flesta har fått information från Stanna kvar på arenan, inte gått i duschen. Vi drar alltså igång här, lite till idag, och det är sex lag där också som ska få pris. Och vi börjar med det här laget som kom på sjätte plats. Kommer från Norge och heter Optal Orientering. Sondre och Larsen, Vegard Järvis Västergård och Jörgen Backlid. Vi ska se om vi har dem på plats här. Vi fortsätter i varje fall. Vi hoppas att det var bara det laget som dyker upp här strax. Vi går på laget som kom på femte plats. Det var Haga Bygård, Viktor Larsson, Filip Dahlgren och Martin Regborg. Här kommer Optal också, ja. Härligt. Är vi är lite tajt med prisutdelningen här grabbar, men det var Jättebra. Och så tar vi fram med Haga vi också. På en femte plats alltså. Och så tar vi laget som kom på en fjärde plats. Som kommer från Blekinge och de heter Oko Orio, Tim Johansson, Axel Tratt och Anton Johansson. Och då klättrar vi upp på pallen. Och på en tredje plats från Norge, och det är ju då Halden SK, Nils Christian Hellerud, Magne Deli och Gudhem Elias. Och så det var ju spännande om segern ändå fram till slutet, men... Stora tur där får nöja sig med andra plats idag. Bra nog det, men i dagens sprang Henrik Johansson, Viktor Svens och Emil Svens. Och så då segern i den här inledande stafettligan. Det laget heter IFK Göteborg, Håvard Kampersan SK, Max Kirkebeine och så tydmannen Elias Jonsson. Och även där så ska då alltså Susanne Morup dela ut eh, blomster till de tre första lagen och sen ska man få välja en pris på vägen ut sedan. Och då ger vi även de här herrarna en jätteapplåd. Och även idag kan gå ner. Börja med Göteborg så får ni välja priser här. 